Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So okay, here's the frustrating thing. My instincts are to call this week on the Hot 100 pretty normal. But seriously, what even is normal in 2020 for the Hot 100, where the album bombs are back in spades and the number one has rotated in flagrantly artificial success? And while I'm not about to call this year all that bad, it certainly has felt like a total mess. And yes, yeah, some of that feels indicative of the times, but it's left me struggling for how predictions and how the rest of this year is going to turn out. I mean, look at our top 10 right now, where for another week, Rockstar by DaBaby and Roddy Rich holds the number one. Now, this is easy to predict. It's strong in all channels, especially streaming. It's on a radio run. But then we go to our number two, What's Poppin' by Jack Harlow, now credited with the remix from DaBaby, Tory Lanez, and Lil Wayne. I mean, I knew this was going to keep ascending, but I didn't expect it this fast. Although the margin that Rockstar has in sales and airplay might keep it on top, even if What's Poppin' blows up on streaming and passes it there. But then, steady as ever, Blinding Lights by the Weekends at number three. The sales are down, it's losing radio, but it had a good enough week on streaming, so it's relatively fine given the margins, especially in airplay. Now, what did surprise me a bit was the drop back for Savage by Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce at number four. I mean, it's weird. It picked up spots on the radio because the songs above it are collapsing, not because this is wound up particularly strong. And while I thought Rose's I'm In Back remix would make a play beyond number five for St. John, on, a bad sales week and unimpressive streaming isn't going to boost a good radio run. Now, what's a lot more telling comes in Say So by Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj holding at number six, and Intentions by Justin Bieber featuring Quavo falling to number seven, because all the both of them really have is radio, and now that's tanking took it long enough. Now this opens up room for Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles to actually break into the top 10 at number 8, thanks to a radio tear and surprisingly good streaming for a pop song. And I can see this holding for the next couple of weeks barring a serious disruption. But then there's Blueberry Fago by Lil Mosey holding at number 9. It's also got the radio and streaming with just nothing close to real momentum. It'll be fine, but also now breaking into the top 10, We Paid by Lil Baby and 42 Doug, which really broke this high thanks to the video and streaming and nothing else. It's not going to last in the top 10, and you know what? I'm mostly okay with that. But on that note are losers and dropouts, and we had a few big ones this week. Clinching their year-end list spots, we got I Hope You're Happy Now by Carly Pierce and Lee Bryce, and Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish. And falling shorter than I'd personally like, Level of Concern by 21 Pilots. But on the topic of underperformance, that's pretty much the story for most of our losers. I mean, outside of After a Few by Travis Denning going to number 67 as it concludes its radio arc, really good run for a first off single. But how else can you explain the continued collapse of Trolls by 6 9 and Nicki Minaj at 54? This was at number one two weeks ago. Or Shot of Flow 5 by Annalie Choppa at 100. Or Go by Kid Leroy and the late Juice World sliding to 80. Then off the debut, Black Parade by Beyonce slid to 71. And to round things out, Believe It by Party Next Door and Rihanna finally looks like it's heading out at 85. Another big underperformance. And X by the Jonas Brothers and Carol G hit 98. But I'll admit where I'm struggling here is with our gains and our returning entries. Yes, Three Headed Go by Lil Durk, Lil Baby, and Polo G. It's back because of the video at 60. But our gains here are a pretty weird group. I mean, for one, our country gains are More Than My Hometown by Morgan Wallen at 82, Done by Chris Jansen at 63, and Got What I Got by Jason Aldean at 52. Honest question, why are these the songs that Nashville thinks anybody wants to hear right now? I mean, I can basically say the same thing for the continued gains of Like That by Doja Cat and Gucci made up to 51. At least I get why Savage Love by Josh685 and Jason DeRozan rule is up to 31. It's got the sort of hook that never goddamn goes away. It's that annoying. But to round this out, oh god, Bang by AJR is up to 86 off the debut. Uh, folks, 2020 has been rough enough. We don't need to give AJR a real hit, especially off of the radio. 
okay? Well, anyway, we got a decent list of new arrivals ahead, and we're actually gonna start in country with number 99, I Called Mama by Tim McGraw. Trees, I thought of home, grab my phone from my pocket. I call mama. This is actually the sort of song that I have more complicated opinions on it than I thought I would. Because on the one hand, it's exactly the sort of country song I like to hear from Tim McGraw. The textured guitars, the organic percussion, the plentiful pedal steel and organ to flesh out the melody. Tim McGraw himself, he sounds really good. And the message of cherishing your family for however little time you might have with them, especially in times like these, that's powerful stuff. The problem is that I've been listening to Tim McGraw for decades now, and there are a lot of parallels to his 2004 hit, Live Like You Are Dying. Maybe a little bit less self-focused, but it hits a lot of very similar notes. Now, the subtle, very quiet restraint of this, it is potent, but will I remember it in the same way as one of Tim McGraw's biggest and arguably best power ballads? I mean, it's tough to say, but either way, I'm nitpicking. This is still really damn good, and his sense of sentimentality, it is part of his charm. So yeah, I like this. Check it out. Number 96, Rags to Riches by Rod Wave. Luxury, now we in luxury. Straight out that bottom, nobody gave nothing to me. You had to pick the song I like the least on the album. Really, Rod Wave? We're gonna go with this over I Remember? Really? Now, it's not like I don't see the appeal here. It's got the most basic and repetitive groove, and even if the bass beat is totally blown out and swamping the track, the hook is still catchy. But it's also barely a fragment of a song. One verse is not particularly coherent in its mo money, mo problems arc, and even if Rod Wave sounds okay, it's just a lot less than I know for a fact he's capable. Still, not bad, it just feels unfinished and I'm disappointed he's choosing to push this instead of other songs. But on the topic of disappointments, number 93, Lovin' On You by Luke Combs. Well, all right, it's not the worst song on the album, but really, come on, Luke Combs, you're pushing this instead of Six Feet Apart when that might be all the more prescient to these times? I mean, that's just a classic example of bad management. Yes, folks aren't really fond of quarantine songs, I include myself in that, but look at the state of the country. Sometimes they might help instead of an interchangeable love song that we know from Luke Combs before. Yeah, the saxophone sounds cool blended in opposite the saloon piano and the pedal steel, and while the hand claps sound really limp, and the vocal mixing on the final hook sounds really canned. I mean, it's an easy slice of neo-traditional country on texture alone, it's easy for me to like. But again, Luke Combs had a surefire home run, it's his management playing it safe, and I know for a fact he's better than this. Hell, even if this is fine enough, you want the prime example of one of his recent collaborators taking a real risk? Number 92, stick that in your country song by Eric Church. I get the whole world singing along, yeah. I stick that in your country song, yeah. So, I've actually already reviewed this song. Go check my Instagram, at Spectrum Pulse, where I actually discussed this in some detail in a video over there. And while it has grown on me since it's dropped, I mean, Eric Church sounding so righteously pissed as he completes the Heartland Rock tradition to more subversive Americana, alongside with a Sturgill Simpson-esque middle finger to Nashville, I can also say that Sturgill Simpson's recent misadventures in rock mixing and mastering kind of may have also hurt this song. Eric Church's vocal play should be a lot louder opposite that roaring guitar and the more soulful backing vocals. But still, for as kick-ass as this is, I also just know Nashville Radio wanted the Stones to touch it, so any success this will have will have to come from streaming or sales. Just for all y'all to keep in mind if we want that middle finger to keep on raising. Just saying. Number 77, Past Life by Trevor Daniel and Selena Gomez. I never let you figure me out 
It makes way too much sense that Trevor Daniel, one of the most flagrant Post Malone ripoffs I've heard in recent memory, is working with Selena Gomez, an artist who is at her best when she's sliding her personality into whatever electronic groove can suffice from a producer. So yeah, rock bottom expectations for this remix, that was a given here. And yet, I will say this is a fair bit better than I was expecting. Most because Selena Gomez leans into her subtler, more restrained delivery and she actually sounds really good. And I like the content too. Unlike the solo version of the song that did not work at all, this actually shows both partners reflecting on using each other in a bad relationship and trying to look for something in the future better to come. Hell, I'd be inclined to say the only real problem I have might be with some of the production and that warping acoustic sample crib from an unreleased Lil Peep song, not helped by some of those flat synth touches. But really, between the piano work surrounding the sharper trap snares and that thicker beat in the groove, it mostly makes up for it. In other words, you know what, for a trap pop song, this is surprisingly good. I might be okay if this sticks around. Number 75, Know My Rights by Black featuring Lil Baby. Pay the price. Take no advice. I've been in the field and I know my wrongs, I know my rights. So Black put out an EP recently. And I'll be honest, I've been really waiting for his work to really grip me or rise above the average, as I know he's got that potential, but I've struggled to find the actual songs that would really put him over the top. And I couldn't imagine that teaming up with a little baby on a dreary trap flex song would be the necessary step. And turns out I was exactly right with that, because this is a slog. A leaden trap beat off of an indistinct guitar, a hook where it sounds like Black would rather be anywhere else, as he says he works harder than everyone else. Maybe not a good thing for your song to feel as much like work for your audience. And then a little baby comparing the girl blowing him to Hannibal Lecter. He also claims that he's top five, which I'm not about to dignify outside of any category beyond Billboard chart success. Man alive, he's just tanking all that goodwill I wanted to give him. Nah, uh, if anything, this isn't bad so much as it's just a forgettable slog. Let's move on. Next, number 49, Wash Us in the Blood by Kanye West featuring Travis Scott. No choice selling drugs. South side what it does. Rain down on us. Genocide what it does. So Kanye's album rollouts are getting worse, and given the music has fallen far short the past couple of years, I think I'm obliged to not care at this point. Folks, He's not running for president. He's filed none of the paperwork and he's got no ground game. This is a cheap ploy to get him to trend and somehow y'all bought it. Regardless, he's got a single with Travis Scott, mostly buoyed by the chart position thanks to the sales, with some even hailing this as a return to the Yeezus sound. And look, as somebody who defends more of Yeezus than I probably should, this does not rise to that project. For as much as Kanye accuses the labels of only wanting calm Ye, he sounds pretty Pretty level headed and honestly kind of flattened his delivery across a lot of the song, which is also how he would characterize the clanking patter of the drums and the warbling synths behind him. Hell, I would argue Travis Scott at least sounds better positioned in the mix for when he shows up, especially as for the first verse, Kanye is behind this weird canned robotic filter. But the problem, as per usual, the content, where Kanye West juxtaposes getting washed in the blood of Jesus as salvation from street violence and drug dealing, which to me seems a little off about addressing the real systemic issues in America right now, but also a sense that Kanye's priorities might be in a different place that only intensifies by his final verse, where he is complaining that people will chop up his interviews and then he calls them fake news. Though there's where his priorities are. I mean, it's not even that this song is particularly weird or alien. Once again, you can draw the obvious comparison to Death Grips doing even this more restrained approach better. But I'll say, it, it bugs me a lot how much Kanye coaxes his own grievances through religious and historically charged language and social issues. Especially when the song kind of blows. Next, number 33, How You Like That by Blackpink. Look, I keep trying to find the in-row with Blackpink. I've heard a decent number of their singles, and given how much that collaboration with Lady Gaga didn't work at all, I wasn't sure what we were gonna get with this, and wow, this isn't good either. 
and it's actually pretty easy to pinpoint the two problems. One, despite having pretty decent chemistry with each other, and okay verses about building themselves out of a bad breakup, the hook is trying to lean into the look at you, the look at me flex, and I'm fairly certain that meme has been dead for years now. More to the point, they're doubling down on a lot of the obnoxiousness on that hook and post chorus with these flattened squonks of synth that sound like teased out farts, and they've got nothing close to real impact, especially when Blackpink are just gonna reference themselves on the outro. I don't know, maybe the group is just not for me at this point, but even as an aspirational girl power song, it's just so aggressively annoying and not in the fun way. So yeah, I, I can't call this any good either, especially when we can follow it with number 28, Girls in the Hood by Megan Stallion. Oh my outfit. I don't text quick, cause I ain't thirsty. These bitches mad mad, they wanna hurt me. The one thing I like a lot about Megan Thee Stallion is not only does she know the past and history of rap music, she's also willing to flip, sample, and recontextualize a lot of it for pretty good new music. Old school samples and swagger married to a performer who can actually live up to it. It was a big reason why I really like B-I-T-C-H. If only with the easy e flip here? Well, yeah, it works. The one thing I like is that while there's more trap percussion flushing out the boys in the hood keys and guitar, Megan Megan has that aggro energy to command the track, sound just about as filthy, interpolate an old school flow really effectively, and yet trim back from some of the overlong storytelling of the original that contains smacking bitches and fart jokes. People forget the original Boys in the Hood was nearly six minutes long and probably should have been trimmed back then. And I like that Megan Thee Stallion is starting to show off a little more unique lyrical personality as well. That narrow to reference was brief, but it was a nice touch. Now I will say it's a little bit bullshit to discover that Easy es daughters haven't been able to sample his own body of work while Megan apparently can. That's some label chicanery in a really depressing way. But you know what, as it is, I like this a fair bit. It's a really solid song. And it rounds out a week that was honestly a lot better than I was expecting, to the point where actually picking the best was a bit tricky. Now I'm gonna go with Stick That In Your Country song by Eric Church at the very top, but it's close behind it. I'm gonna say that Megan just edges out Tim McGraw with Girls in the Hood here. And you know what? It is close. Worst of the week, I'm gonna give Blackpink the dishonorable mention for annoying me with how you like that. If only because Wash Us in the Blood by Kanye West and Travis Scott just hits the worst. Because for everything that it's trying to do, it either underperforms or it fails. Now next week... It looks like we're gonna get a posthumous Pop Smoke album bomb, maybe, stay tuned for that. Who knows what's gonna happen there. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse.